sick of paying fees to buy stocks? Well, this is free trade. But is it all just noise? Let's find out. When reviewing a financial product, we need to consider a few different things. But today I'll look at who are free trade and can we trust them with our money? What are they offering us and how easy is it to use? And finally, my opinion on if you should use them. First up, who are they? Formed in 2015 by Adam Dodds and David Fioranelli. I'm sorry if I just butchered that. And launching first to iOS in October 2018 and then to Android six months later, Free Trade literally burst onto the UK investment scene with its attractive pink branding and enticing offer of a free share for you and anyone that you invite to the platform. That offer still runs today. Rapid growth, dedicated fans and an oversubscribed crowdfund have been the tone since. They already boast 150,000 users and if you consider AJ Bell, one of their competitors who set up in 1995, only has 232,000 customers, that's a blistering pace straight out of the blocks. Their value proposition is simple, to allow you to buy shares for free. Traditional platforms costs range from a couple of pounds all the way up to seven to 10 pounds per trade, which basically means it only really makes sense investing larger sums so you can dilute the impact of that fee. Buying 10 pounds worth of Apple shares when there's a fixed cost of seven pounds to do so doesn't really make much sense. Free Trade say they want to change the face of investing. Certainly a noble cause, but not a new one. Robin Hood has been doing this in America since 2013, but what's important here is that Robin Hood have shown that this model of zero fee trading is both popular and sustainable. Free Trade make their money in a few different ways. First of all, they'll likely collect interest on cash that's held on their platform. And secondly, there are two paid for options on accounts, including an ISA and a premium account which I'll cover in more detail in a second. Really, it's quite hard to find any dirt on these guys. I had a look around. As a brand new business, it's to be expected. The only thing I did find that was negative in the slightest was a few scathing Glassdoor reviews. I try and take Glassdoor reviews with a pinch of salt on the basis that any employee leaving a business typically isn't happy with the business when they leave. All in all, the business looks well run and innovative to a point. And most importantly, they're regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority, which means your funds up to the tune of £85,000 are protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. What that basically means is, if free trade go under, the government guarantee the first £85,000 worth of funds that you have on that platform. But don't forget that doesn't protect you from poor investment decisions. Your money is at risk when you invest. But it does give you confidence that you know that you can invest up to that level without fear of the company going under and you losing all of your money. Okay, next let's have a look at the offering from a usability perspective. Free Trade is only available as an app in both iOS and Android versions. There is no desktop platform, which personally doesn't bother me at all, as the benefit of not paying to trade justifies a simple, stripped back user experience. Sign up is a breeze, like seriously easy, but you need to decide between a basic account or an ISA. Basic accounts where you trade for free, only other fees are foreign exchange fees of 0.45% if you buy shares in other countries, and stamp duty in the UK of 0.5%. The ISA costs £3 a month. And for a new investor looking to make small monthly contributions who doesn't have over £10,000 to invest straight away, that's expensive. If you already have an ISA with over 10 k in it, or you have that to invest initially, then this fixed fee model might be of interest. There's talks of a premium account which costs £10 a month, but personally I find it hard to see what services could be included in that that justify that price. The main selling point here is that it's free to trade. There's not many more bells and whistles that you can add on to that in my opinion. The portfolio page shows a performance graph which is simple in design but an effective visual display. Beneath it is the share invite which is a unique code that can be used by one person. It does refresh weekly and if you request more via live chat they send them. Free Trade promote this as a random share worth between £3 and £200. How random it is, I don't really know, as I refer five people and got five shares all in JD Sport. Doesn't seem very random to me. Below that is investments showing you individual holdings in order of value from top to bottom. You can click into each, where you can buy, sell, and view general information around the investment itself. All very basic, but it's clean and easy to get your head around. If I wanted to buy, I just click buy, enter an amount and press enter. So tip here is free trade focus on inputting the amount you wish to invest rather than how many shares you wish to buy. So let's say I want to spend £10. It calculates as close as it can in terms of how many shares that is and then puts the change back into your available balance. This is especially useful on companies with larger values. So for example, Apple, free trade facilitate fractional shares where you can buy a slice of a share, which means you don't need to part with thousands of dollars to buy an Apple share. You can just input, say, £5 and buy it. 
Worth noting again, you do pay a fee of 0.5% on foreign currency transactions. Pay attention to trading hours as well. If you want to buy, join the market being open so it actions straight away at that price. It'll tell you here if the market isn't open. On numerous occasions in the last three months, I'd say four times, trading has gone down on the app due to technical issues. Really annoying when you have something that you wish to buy and a telltale sign of a business that's growing quickly and struggling to scale. This does leave me concerned on whether they can meet increased demand, but only time will tell with that. And to be fair to them, they always seem to jump on it straight away, get it resolved quite quickly, and they communicate throughout the whole process. On the Insights screen, there's not much to say here really. Unless you hold different types of assets and you will be looking to rebalance, this screen will be useful. For me, it's pretty pointless. Discovery is the page where you would look for shares and ETFs. Due to the stripped back nature of free trade, I don't imagine many people will be using this as a means of finding an investment to back and certainly not appraising it. Really, the Discover page is just simply to provide a shop window for the shares and ETFs they have available. On this point, a major drawback to free trade is the lack of available investments on the platform versus larger providers. In their defense, they are constantly adding to this list and in reality, it includes a lot of the big blue chip companies a lot of new investors will be looking to buy. Personally, I would like to see the Life Strategy Fund from Vanguard added onto here before I switch over my whole portfolio. The activity screen shows your purchase and selling history. And on the account screen, this is where you handle any top ups or cash withdrawals. The only way to communicate with Free Trade is via their chat feature found on the little person icon in the top right. I've used it multiple times and I find it quick and efficient. You get to speak to a person straight away and answers have been detailed and thorough. In summary, I've always kept an eye on when Robinhood will be landing in the UK, but it seems that the trade in 212 and free trade have beaten them to it. As a set it and forget it, buy the same fund every month and just never look at it kind of investor, free trade has spiced things up a little bit for me. The timing of free trade's rapid rise and coronavirus are no coincidence in my opinion. This app is perfect for pouncing on opportunities that present themselves in the market, but I won't be switching my ISA here yet. The fee model on the ISA is attractive to those who have holdings above 10K, but the choices around funds at the minute are limited, and I like that style of investing as part of any portfolio that I'm building. For those of you who are just starting out investing and don't have more than 10K to invest, the ISA on free trade is expensive. Personally, I would focus on building a portfolio elsewhere with the likes of Vanguard or Hargreaves Lansdon, and then maybe transferring it to free trade in the future. The app is really basic. And in some ways, after a week of using it, I felt like I completed it. Like it had no more information to give me apart from obsessing over daily movements in the share price. I only really use it to buy and sell shares, but I don't think that's a bad thing as the true value in this app is the ability to trade for free. I love what free trade are doing here. The idea that I can buy a few quid's worth of shares in the biggest businesses in the world whenever I like without paying a fee is nothing short of revolutionary. And they presented it in an easy to use, efficient package, backed up by good customer service and support. For that reason, it'll be staying in my finance app folder on my phone, but I'll still continue to use my main ISA for the majority of my investing, and free trade will be a place that I have a cheeky little dabble. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you soon.